So, episode 6 kicks off with a slight change of tempo and good old Uncle Benjamin is showing us one of his 5 minute recipes. Hi, today we're making mud pie. Simply shove your dirty little fingers in the ground and find some seeds. Sprinkle them back in the ground and then give them a good old stroke with those dirty little fingernails of yours. Oh, it would appear he's done been had been done, got his nails done dead and can I say so, what a fabulous manicure it is that you have. On the real though, his nails do look like Squidward's nose. Just saying. Okay, why don't orcs wear armor anymore? They're about to go into battle, right? And they're all just wearing togas. To the apple arnen. But Johnny, they wear those because of the sunlight. Yeah, well, what about Thighs McGee over here? <laughs> Oof, he's gonna have some shocking tan lines ears. And what's the deal with this guy? Because he's not gonna be of much help in combat, is he? Like, but he's now, he stood right behind Ador as though he's important in some way. Like, I, I, I think he's just there as, like, a really clumsy representation of spinelessness. He's literally just there so you can boo at someone. I, f I don't know, man. And now, a word from our sponsor. Okay, I don't have a sponsor, but subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Got ya. So then, Adar and co turn up to the Watchtower where all of the villagers used to be, but it turns out they're not there anymore. But where could they have gone? Well, it turns out they've done a classic switcheroo. And uh, now the orcs are at the Watchtower, They've gone back to the village where the orcs were before they came to the watchtower. They've just they've swapped places. But how did a group of villagers manage to sneak past an army of orcs on a one-way mountain path? I have no idea. Now, have you ever played Mad Dog McCree at the arcade? It's in the air. It's an ill wind that bows no good. Mad Dog McCree and his band of cutthroats riding into town. What we need is a gunslinger. You handle yourself, Pilgrim. You, uh, spray a little lead in harm's way. Then Uncle Benjamin has to have his goth mug moment. <laughs> then a sealed door wakes up to go shovel some horse shit. Why? Just get your own apple! Why, ugh, why you gotta take it in turns like that? Someone sat there and wrote this. What's the big deal about this apple? Why did he throw it overboard? He could've just given it the horse! Man, if only Finrod were here, he'd be able to tell me whether that apple floats or sinks. And of course, the sealed door could not see what Galadriel can see. I, I was only... Hoping to get the first sight of land. It'll be visible to your eyes in a few moments. Is it visible to yours already? Has been for nearly an hour. Ooh, Galadriel, you're so amazing! Oh, shut up, mate! Just throw yourself overboard next time. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time. Galadriel then finds an opportunity to kindly lecture a sealed or about pride. Humility has saved entire kingdoms, the proud of all but led to ruin. She's literally talking about herself! She's incredibly prideful, arrogant, condescending, the irony that she wants to lecture someone about pride. She has to be the least self-aware character ever written. Also, am I being stupid, but like, why is she already wearing her armor? She's fully suited up. She is double cheeked up, up on a Thursday afternoon. afternoon. You've still got the whole boat ride. Just wear some normal clothes, you get to dry land, boom, put your armor on. Right? Mm, it might be in case uh, some of the Numenorians decide to attack her. Which they should do. His mother. What happened to her? It is strange. Most of my life I've looked east to see the sun rise over the sea, and west to see it set over the land. We're sailing into the dawn, and yet to me, it feels like the coming of night. She drowned. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just. That was such a long winded answer. And then just a mic drop right at the end. Yeah, she drowned. Comedy gold, man. It is beyond our skill to destroy. Oh, don't worry, mate. You tried your hardest, didn't you? He's he tried to destroy it with a wooden handled hammer. Even if it was a normal sword hilt, you wouldn't be able to destroy it with a hammer. But but no, it's it's beyond the skill of the elves. Now the villagers are back in the town, they're now preparing to fight with the orcs. Now, why haven't they fled? I hear you ask. Well, it's hard to look like an empowered woman when you're running away, isn't it? Our position gives us an advantage. 
yeah, be, mm, being downhill is, it's famous for being a strategically uh, advantaged position when in battle. Uh, how's that Obi-Wan quote? It's over, Anakin. I have the low ground. I think that's, yeah, I think that's how it went, right? I have seen smaller armies defeat greater foes. Ah, but have you seen a bunch of homeless people with pots and pans fight off fully armed orcs wearing togas before? I think not. No, but for real, why haven't they just peaced out at this point? Like, run away. Just go find help. You don't have to fight them all by yourselves. Like, I would consider myself to be a relatively brave person when I need to be. I would have been out of there. I know my place. No amount of empowerment can help you win a battle. We all know that's what's going to happen, but still, the, <sighs> the writing is fantastic. You remember what you used to say when you would hold me in the dark? Would you say it to me now? This shadow is but a small and passing thing. There is light and high beauty forever beyond its reach. Man, what a clumsy way to start a monologue, to have a character literally ask another character to say it. They, they, hmm, this isn't bad writing. This is bad, bad writing. This is bad, bad, not good writing. This is bad, bad, stinky, poo, poo, pee, pee, stinky writing. That's what this is. They keep putting the main characters in danger and you find yourself sitting there thinking, ah, I hope they die. <laughs> So, they're preparing for the battle with the orcs, and Bronwyn tells her son that he has to stay locked up uh, with everyone else to protect all those who can't fight. But the thing is, you know, if it, with his age and build, he would be useful in combat. You need him in the field, but no, she decides to keep him locked up inside. Now, is Bronwyn going to be locked up inside with all the people who can't fight? No, of course not. Now, and this has nothing to do with agenda. This is the fact that she spent her entire life picking flowers. What is this woman going to do? You cannot stab an orc with female empowerment. What is she going to do? The Alfred seeds. It is a tradition among elves. Before the battle begins, plant one. New life. In defiance of death. Wow, thanks for spelling that out for us. I mean, you could have let the audience in further, but no. The show has to treat you like you're an idiot. Because you are. Because you watch this. So what, I'm just gonna come around and say it. The music is shit. It's, it's utter shite. Like, this had the potential to be a decent scene. So, you know, it's night, they're all waiting in the town. They're like, they're just, you know, they're looking out for the orcs to appear. And then all of a sudden, like, like you know, far away in the distance, you see like little torches start to light up. And this, this could have been, a, like I say, this could have been a half decent scene. That could have been, you know, a good way to build tension, but the music completely undermines it and ruins the entire scene. It sounds like I'm in pissing Diagon Alley. Like the, um, the ding, ding, ding. It sounds like, it sounds like the start of that Willy Wonka song. The, come with me. And you'll be in a world of no imagination. So the orcs finally make it to the town and they've got a battering ram. Why do they need a battering ram for a small wooden door? They're literally all carrying fire. They could just burn it down. Then big brain Bronwyn decides to ambush an orc by stabbing him in the foot with a sickle. Now you might be thinking, gee, that sounds like an awfully silly idea, but don't worry because she's got a surplus white woman as backup. Ooh, never mind. And then of course she wins in hand-to-hand -hand combat because apparently the sickle is now mightier than the sword. So bold, so brave. And I will say, Aaron Deer's technique when firing his bow is it's pretty cool. It's a little bit fruity, but, uh, you know, it does somewhat resemble uh, Legolas's style. <laughs> to be fair, though, that's only a compliment because they kind of stole that from the Peter Jackson trilogy, but... So, the villagers have lured the orcs into the middle of the village and the Johnny cashed them, trapping them in a, a big ring of fire. This is until they manage to break down the impenetrable wall of flame. My goodness. How did they manage to escape? And some of the action scenes are just borderline slapstick. How did a seven foot orc sneak up on an elf? 
Why did he wait to be noticed, like he's a Scooby-Doo villain? Why does he not have a weapon? Hey, I think I'm having a brain aneurysm. No, for real though, the plot armor is thicker than Deezer. I mean, this Gigantamax orc has more than one opportunity to kill Arandir and just doesn't. Could have snapped his neck or something, but no, he just wanted to cradle him for a moment or two. Now, before I show you this next clip, please keep in mind that each one of these episodes cost around 50 million to make. Just keep that in mind. Now, I'm not going to show it because YouTube won't like it, but the scene where, you know, the Gigantamax orc, like, pulls the spike out of his eye and tries to, like, stab Arandir with it, it goes on for so long. It is, they are genuinely padding time out with this scene. And then, of course, just when he's about to get stabbed, someone comes and saves the day. No. No. Whoa, 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 did they shoot Bronwyn? Oh, uh, okay, okay. I'm back. Wake up, mother! You know what, fair dues to him. They've finally got some balls and they've actually killed off one of the main characters. Why did I think that? Why did I think they'd do that? I'm an idiot. And somewhat akin to the charge of Gandalf the White during the Helm's Deep battle, we've got the charge of the White Woman. Uh, that White Woman being Galadriel. Well, I can't say I'm happy she's here, but at least she's not smiling this time. I'll take that back. I'd rather watch Galadriel smile again. What was that? He it's not, do you know what, it's not even like, it's not even the bullet time dodge that bothers me. How on earth did she manage to generate enough force from that position to cut an orc in half? My brain is melting! Who is that? Commander of the Northern Armies, Galathiel. Oh my god, her name changes every week, it's Galathiel now. Okay, add that one to the list. So, they've got Uncle Benjen, and uh, Halbrand wants to not alive him for personal reasons, but Galadriel sees this as an opportunity to say something incredibly philosophical. Halbrand, put it down. One cannot satisfy thirst by drinking seawater. Okay, straight up, I'm just running out of shit to say at this point. What are you on about? What did... Uh, yes, I get it, I get it. Seawater's salty, it dehydrates you. What's that got to do with Ador? I... I... It sounds philosophical, but when you actually think about it, it's stupid. And now Galathiel is talking to Uncle Benjen, and uh, Uncle Benjen, he's beginning to explain like the motive behind the orcs. Uh, and it's quite interesting, but the thing is, because Galadriel is so unlikable, by the end of the conversation, she just sounds like a genocidal maniac, and you sit there thinking, man, Ador's actually kind of got a point. I mean, I guess orcs do kind of have a right to live as well. It's worthy of the breath of life and just as worthy of a home. And even if it takes me all of this age, I vow to eradicate every last one of you. I will whisper in your piked ear that all your offspring are dead. Well, her face still isn't moving, but unfortunately her mouth continues to. Now, now Galadriel, it's 2022. Adar has told you more than once now that he prefers to be referred to as an Uruk and you keep calling him an Orc. That doesn't sound very progressive to me. Orcs. Uruk. We prefer Uruk. You slavering fuck. Galadriel. Uruk. Not to mention, the guy that was going to kill him earlier, that you had to stop, now has to stop you doing the very same thing. So now you can add very short-tempered and hypocritical to the long list of very likeable traits that Galathiel has. A burden I never sought to take up. Few of the finest leaders do. Yay, women! But if you would like some relief in carrying it, I may be able to help. Well, that's good, because you've done shit all so far this episode. And honestly, I don't think they wrote enough material. I think whoever wrote the script didn't write enough, and now they have to pass notes onto the actors saying, 
can you just keep adding pauses into everything? Because every single conversation in this episode is littered with unbearable and utterly pointless dramatic pausing. When it was in my hands, I felt powerful. Once you notice it, you realise just how much of the show is taken up by just waiting for characters to finish their sentences. Then Mount Doom goes boom, Galadriel doesn't die, the end. And a big shout out to Steve the Goat, Pozzabon, Said, Brennus, Dr. Melsky, MG Virgil, and all of the patrons and the channel members. Thank you so much for choosing to support me behind the scenes. It makes a big difference. And there we go. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why not check out my other videos? If you like this one, I do the same thing in, in all my other videos, basically. I'm not particularly original, so uh, but you will enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, why don't you go check them out? Take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you very soon.